We're going to continue our, our series um, this evening, and, and I'm so excited that we've been able to go through this series, and for those of you who are new, uh, man, we, we, we started this series. This, this series was inspired really through Sunday school class uh, that we began doing, and, and that Sunday school class was so excited that we actually began to, to do this, this, this class midweek, and uh, I'm just so thankful for some of the people in our church who are faithful and obedient, and when God places something on their heart, they're not afraid to, to bring it forward and say, hey, pastor, can we do this? Uh, because I love that. And, and, and so this series was really birthed out of that. And, and because as I was going through the class, uh, we really just got excited about who God really was and, and what his name was. And there, there's just something powerful about our name. And when we know our name, it, it changes everything. Like it, it puts us on a, a personal relationship and through this series, Ben, I've just been so excited. Have you noticed, and maybe not all of you, but, but, but those of you who are on social media, have you noticed how the name of God is changing on social media? Isn't that really cool? Like, it's no longer God. It's, it's Elohim or, or Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahweh Rophe. I mean, it has just been amazing to see how this really is sticking and how people really are getting it and they're understanding him by name and and our name really says a lot about who we are in fact in the book of proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 it says this a good name is more desirable than great riches a good name is more desirable than great As we go through this series, I think it is so important that we understand his name. Because when we understand his name, when we understand who he is, we get to know what he can do. When we understand who God is, we can know what God can do. Today we're going to look at another name, and, and that name is Yahweh Yaira. And it simply means this, the Lord provides. How many believe tonight that the Lord provides? The Lord provides. And as you look at this word, that, that, that particular word, Yaira, there's, there's something special about it because it is a it, it is it, it comes from a, a Hebrew word that is in plural form. And, and what's amazing about it is the Lord provides past, present, and future need. That's exciting. Past, present, and future need. And the beautiful thing about Yahweh Yaira is simply this: there are no boundaries. He has no boundaries. He has no limits. And he has no restrictions. I just think that's amazing news. That's, that's good news. That in itself is worth telling somebody about the Lord that you serve. The God I serve has no boundaries, has no limits, has no restrictions. Nothing can hold him back. It's good news because if you've ever needed something, and maybe some of you are here tonight and, and you have a need, it's important that you recognize the Lord provides. No matter what it is that you're going through, the Lord can provide. And I just want to say this from the bottom of my heart, I am glad that you are here. So glad that you're here. Would you bow your heads and let's open in a word of prayer. Father God, again, I can't thank you enough. 
You are Yahweh Yaira. And you provide for us. We're so blessed. And, and, and oftentimes we take for granted how blessed we are. May we recognize this evening that, that it's because of who you are that we are what we are. May we recognize that you're our provider. And that there are no boundaries that hold you back. No, no limits that can be placed on you. No restrictions. So no matter where we're at or what we're going through, our need can be met. I just thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to get right into the word. I don't know if you know this or not, but do you know Sunday's message was 57 minutes long? Anytime I go over 35, uh, our youth pastor is all over me saying, Pastor, you went way too long. And I said, well, I got out by, by noon. And he says, well, you went way too long. I don't know what was different. And I had to really think about it. And, and the reason that we went way long was, well, was one, that's what God wanted. But, but two, we had a really low attendance because it's summer, the weather's nice, so communion didn't take as long. And I said we didn't have a youth, I told him this, I said we didn't have a youth pastor standing up here giving a mini message before the message. <laughs> So anyway, the whole purpose of in saying that is, is I'm not going to try to be 57 minutes. Um, not that I'm afraid to go 57 minutes, but, but man, I believe Holy Spirit will work in, in five minutes if that's what he needs. And he'll work in five hours if that's what he needs. And so we're just here to share his word. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. 22. As you're turning to, to Genesis chapter 22, let me give you a little bit of a background of, of really what's taking place as we're about to read uh, this story that is just so special. I don't know if you know this, but, but God had made a, a covenant with Abraham. And a covenant is, is simply a pledge. It's, it's an agreement. It's, it's a promise. And that covenant that he made with Abraham was simply this, that he would be the father of of many nations, and that he would be fruitful. And, and here's the really cool thing that oftentimes when we talk about this covenant that we forget or it's not mentioned, that Elohim would be their God. Please don't forget that when you look at that covenant. It's so much more than Father Abraham. It's Elohim will be their God. And that covenant would, would be passed down from generation to generation and from generation to generation. The only problem is, is this. Abraham and Sarah hadn't yet had a child. And it's kind of hard to be the father of many nations. It's kind of hard to, to pass down from generation to generation when you and your wife have yet to have a child. And sure, we, we know that that, that Ishmael was, was Abraham's son, but this is not the covenant that God made. Time was running out. Abraham was getting old. Sarah was getting old. And the beautiful thing is, is even though they might not understand it, even though we might not understand it, God blessed them with a child. In their old age. Abraham was 100. Sarah was, was 90 years old. And let me tell you this. If there was ever anyone who wanted a child. If there was ever anyone who, who loved a child. If there was ever a child whose birth was anticipated. It was Isaac. They had waited their whole lives for such a time. As this. So when you understand that, I think it makes this story even more special. This is what Abraham dreamed of. This is what Abraham 
longed for. This was the desire of Abraham's heart. His baby boy. Let's look at the story. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Let me tell you, time and time and time again, God isn't afraid to test our faith. And I just want to make this clear. It's not because he doesn't know the answer, but it is for us to know the answer. The test wasn't for God. The test was for Abraham. God knew what Abraham's response was going to be. This was about strengthening, encouraging. This was about motivating. This was about showing Abraham his faith. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, and and I love these three words. It's three words that you need to learn. It's three words that you need to be able to say, and it's simply this. Here I am. Here I am. Church, if God hasn't called on you yet, he will. And when he does, you need to be able to say, here I am. Here I am. Verse 2. Take your son, your baby, your pride and joy, the son that you waited your whole life for, the son that you had in your old age, your Only son. Yes. I love this. Yes, Isaac. Make no mistake, he wasn't talking about Ishmael or anyone else. Isaac. That Hebrew word for only son, I think it's really important to to point out, is yachid. Yachid, and it simply means only child. It means only one or precious life. It it can mean to, to be the one. Yachid. Take your son, your Yachid, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. There's no way God could have asked him to do that. Our God is a loving God. Our God is filled with grace. How could he ask him to take his son, his one and only son? How could he ask him to take Yachid? And sacrifice him. I'm just reading the word. It's what the word tells us, right? Take your son. The next morning, Abraham got up early, put on a pot of coffee, sat down with his wife Sarah and said, Sarah, you're not going to believe what God asked me to do. He wants us to take our baby boy up to the mountain." And sacrifice him. No, he didn't do that. Abraham's way too wise to tell his wife what God asked him to do. Because you know what mama would have done, right? Ain't no way. I love the Lord, but you ain't taking Isaac. You're not taking yet. You're not taking your cheat. Not not after I had to wait until I was 90 years old to give birth to him. You can't have him. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey, and, and I kind of envision it like this. Honey, is it okay if me and, me and Isaac go on a camping trip for the weekend? Right? I just want to spend some time with our son. There's just some things that him and I need to do. And we're going to grow in the Lord. And she said, oh, that would just be so awesome. 
I often wondered when they came back and, and Isaac told mom what happened. I, I often wondered uh, what happened to Abraham, but that's the rest of the story that we're not going to know until we get to sit down and, and talk with Abraham. And that's just one of those conversations that I want to have. Like, how long did you have to sleep on the couch after that one? Right? Because I'm telling you, if I did something like that with my kids, my wife would not be happy. And I could hear her, you're not playing the God card on this one. Well, honey, I'm telling you, the Lord told me to do it. <laughs> the next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey. He took two of his servants with him along with his son. Ya cheat. His only son. Then he chopped wood for a fire for the burnt offering, and he set out for the place where God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up, and he saw the place in the distance. Can't even imagine the anxiety and the nerves as he finally saw the destination where the sacrifice was going to take place, the sacrifice of his boy. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there. Let me tell you, sometimes worship isn't all butterflies. Sometimes worship isn't, isn't all this, 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 this amazing feeling where we're floating around. I can't imagine how Abraham must have felt. And do you know this is the first time in Scripture worship is mentioned? We will worship there. But I love this. And then we will come right back. Hmm, that's faith. That is faith. I'm sure he was nervous. I'm sure he was anxious. But he knew. He knew Yahweh Yahweh. He didn't know when, he didn't know how, but he knew Yahweh, Yaira. We'll worship there, and then we'll come right back. I believe that's why Abraham is mentioned in the Hall of Faith. Some of you are saying, what's the Hall of Faith? It's in Hebrews. It talks about all those amazing individuals in Scripture who, who had faith. Right? The hall of faith. Verse 6. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders. And while he himself carried the fire in the night, as the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and he said, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and we have the wood. But where's the sheep for the burnt offering? I love Abraham. God will provide. God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. Yahweh, Yaira, will provide a sheep for the burnt offering. Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar, and he arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac, and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Now let me make this clear. Isaac was a strong young man. He carried the wood this whole trip. 
Abraham was fragile and, and old. And you know what that tells me? Isaac loved his father so much that he willingly laid there. He was willingly tied up, willing to do whatever his father asked him to do. And that's faith. That is amazing because I'm telling you, if I was Isaac, I would be saying, wait a minute, Dad. You said Yahweh would provide. And I'm pretty sure I'm not what he's providing. Verse 10. So Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. And at that moment, I can just, I can just see this being played out. Tears rolling down his cheeks, hands shaking. The picture of his son, his only son, laying there. The expressions that he was making. And at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham! Abraham! And I love Abraham's response. Here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son, Yachid. Then Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught by its thorns, or caught by its horns in the thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named the place. Yahweh Yireh, which means the Lord will provide. And to this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On that mountain, the Lord provided. I think there's someone here tonight that needs to hear that. The Lord will provide. I'm just convinced that there's someone here who needs to hear, who needs to know that, that Yahweh Yaira is present and the Lord will provide. I underlined on the mountain. And I put on that day, the Lord will provide. I believe that day is today. The Lord will provide. Verse 15, Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says, Because you have obeyed me and not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my name that I will certainly bless you and I will multiply your descendants beyond number like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants, all nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. I'm convinced this evening that you and I are here. You and I are present. You and I have a relationship with Jesus because of Abraham's obedience. This is a game-changing story. I'm convinced of that. From generation to generation to generation, beyond the number like the stars and the sand, all because of obedience. Verse 19, then they returned to the servants, 
Just as Abraham had said. I love this. And they traveled back to Bathsheba where Abraham continued to live. question that, that I want to really try to answer tonight that, that I think is, is such an important question is this. Why did, why did Yahweh test Abraham? Why did Yahweh test Abraham? In, in Psalms, David wrote that, that, that God really does want to give us the desires of our heart. And what's interesting about this story is I truly believe that, that the desire of, of Abraham's heart was to have that son, Yachid, his, his baby boy, his one and only son. His, his true desire after all of those years was for him and his wife to have that child. And God, God gave him the desire of his heart. And man, I'm just going to be honest. We get some prayer requests, and, and because I pray with our prayer team, which is amazing over all these prayer requests, oftentimes I get to see, they get to see the desires of your heart. Right? We get to see the desires because we get to see what your, what your prayer is. You want to know what someone's heart is, just look at their prayers. It speaks volumes. And we have seen God do some amazing things. Answering prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. I'm telling you, it's been thousands. Answering prayer after prayer after prayer. In fact, I'm reminded of a story when a, a young man who, who barely could put food on the table wrote a prayer request on the cross. And he said, Lord... I got this amazing opportunity to get this job. Help me so I can be a better provider for my family. And the Lord blessed him with this amazing job. And he went from, from making nothing to, to, to more money than, than anyone else in our community, basically. He went from the lowest paying job in the community to the highest paying job in the community. And God gave him the desires of his heart. And I was so excited. I celebrated with him. Because this was good news. And, and this young man was on fire for the Lord. And something happened. Something happened. He got this job, and man, he just got an opportunity of a lifetime to make more money than what he's ever made. And before long, he started working more and more and more and more. And, and we started seeing less and less. Now, it's one thing if you have to work. I understand that. It's another thing if that becomes your God. And you can say, well, how do you know? Well, social media speaks volumes for who we are. You can follow someone on social media and, and pretty much tell who they are. If you watch closely, you'll see who someone is. So I want to ask this question, and this is a question that I think is really important that needs to be asked, and it's simply this. What happens when you pray for the desires of your heart and you get it. How do you respond? Because I think it's important to recognize there is some real substance in this story that we just read. And I think it's important that, that we make it known whenever it, whatever it is, whatever that desire is, whenever it gets greater than God... It's something that you and I finally need to lay or place on the altar and get rid of. So I think that's exactly what happened here. 
Why did Yahweh test Abraham? He finally got the desire of his heart, and now how are you going to respond? Am I still Lord? Am I still Yahweh? Because if I'm not, then you need to place that desire on the altar. And you need to make a sacrifice. And what I love about this story is Abraham said, This is my boy. This is my son. But your Lord. And if this is what you're asking me to do, here I am. I will, I will do it. What about you? Are you willing to give up your greatest desire? Because if you're not, I'm pretty sure that God can remove it. Maybe a better way of asking this question is, have you ever placed anything before him? Why did Yahweh test Abraham? Man, he just wanted to check where he was. And I'm just going to be honest. I am so thankful that, that God loves Troy enough to check me. Because I need to be checked. He doesn't need to know, but I need to know. I need to know that, that I am faithful. I need to know that when Yahweh calls on my name, that I can say, here I am. Don't miss that. Yahweh, Yaira. The Lord provides. I want to share three points, and I'm going to go through these quickly. The first thing I think is really important for us to get is this. God provides in his time. I'm sure Abraham would have loved, absolutely loved, for God to say, as soon as Abraham said, here I am, okay, never mind, you don't have to do it, I found something else. I'm sure he would have loved to, to have that, that comfort of knowing that God provided immediately, but it was, it was the last minute. And oftentimes, that's what Yahweh does. Right? It's, it's the last minute. And, and, and I know we struggle with this because we always think that we know best. But we know very little. We, we really know very little. I, 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 I can honestly say this in, in humility that I know so little. Romans 5, 6 says, when we were utterly helpless, when we were broken, when we were lost, when we needed him the most, Christ came. Don't miss this. At just the right time. And he died. You know what that means? Yahweh, Yaira, provided for you and for me at just the right time. When we thought it was all over, when we thought there was no more hope, Christ showed up. That is good news. Man, when you're going through those difficult situations, when you're in the wilderness, when you're, you're in the desert, can you pray and trust like Abraham? More importantly, can you be obedient like Abraham? It pleases the Lord. Number two, God not only provides in his time, but he provides 
in his way. Man, when we, uh, when we first accept Christ in our lives, we have this, this vision of, of what it's going to be like to be a Christian, what it's going to be like to, to have everything that we need. We, we just have this, this, this view of Christianity. And, and let me tell you, for me, it was eye-opening because everything that I thought was true wasn't. I had it all wrong. We, we just showed an amazing movie uh, last night, The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. And, and Gavin's perception of Christianity was much like mine. I missed it. And so oftentimes, early on in my faith, when, when I was crying out and I was asking Yahweh to provide, I, I, was, I was so far off, and I wanted him to provide my way. Let me tell you something. I'm not Frank Sinatra. Some of you got it. It's not my way. And I'm thankful that, that as I've grown and as I've matured, that, that Yahweh, Yahweh, he provides in his way because his way is far greater. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. What I've learned as I've followed and listened and prayed and grown is simply this. When God provides, it's rarely how I thought it would be. But it's always greater. Let me say that again. It's rarely how I thought it would be, but it's always greater. He has blessed us and provided every need. God provides in his time. He provides in his way. And number three, I think this is really, really, really important. God provides for whose purpose? His purpose. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Abraham obeyed God. God saw his need. And, and, and I can just picture this as, as Abraham and Isaac was walking up the hill and as Abraham saw where he was going to make this sacrifice, not knowing when God was going to show up, on the opposite side of that hill was the ram. And that ram was climbing. God was already working. He was already in the motion. That need had already been met, and Abraham didn't even know it. His purpose. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 through 5 says, Even before he made the world, God loved us, and he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to, to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This was his purpose. And it gave him great pleasure. Man, I love that. God often does his best work when we're hopeless. God often does his best work when, when we have nowhere else to turn. When every door is closed, Yahweh provides. He just has a way of, of showing up. Some of you still, maybe you're just struggling and, and you still don't, don't get it. Well, let me kind of just explain this story real quick, and we'll close this out. Isaac was a, a foreshadow of, of Jesus. Isaac, and what, what Abraham and, and, and Isaac did is a beautiful picture of what God done with his son, Yachid. 
and I don't know if you know this, but, but both were promised. There was a great anticipation for both of their births. Not only were they both promised, they were both miraculously conceived, right? Sarah was 90 years old. That, that's pretty amazing that a 90-year-old can have child. Mary was a virgin. That's, that's amazing that a virgin can have a child. Both climbed the same hill. Did you know that? Wow. The same place where Isaac was going to be sacrificed is the same place where Christ was sacrificed. That, that's, that's amazing. Both were willing to be sacrificed. Isaac was willing to, to lay down his life because his father asked him to. Jesus was willing. Both of them carried their own wood. Isaac carried the wood for the, the altar and Jesus carried the wood for the cross. Yahweh, Yaira. I want to ask the worship team to come back up and we're going to dim the lights. And we're going to close this out. I want to share one more verse, and I don't know if I put it on the flyer. No, I did not. But I did put it on the PowerPoint. Because I think this verse just shares everything that, that you and I need to know this evening. It's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Yachi. It's the same word. Isn't it interesting that, that God referred to Abraham's son in the same manner that he referred to his son? He gets what it's like to give up something. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Church, I've never been more excited than to get to know the name of God. Because when you know who God is, You'll find out what God can do. Yahweh.